もしやコスモではコスモ needs me free コスモ AP ラミデュアリースポーツ Well thankfully the rack solution is deceptively simple A right hand drive steering rack spun to left hand drive now pulls and pushes in the correct direction uh, now where were we? oh yeah the uh, second bracket basically the same as the first just a little bit more ovular <coughs> at this point it is just a matter of building the structure which connects the clamps to the subframe. have to bend that one as well. Let's say kind of like that. Well, the driver's side was exactly the same as the uh, passenger side, so now it's just a matter of pulling the rack off so I can fill in all the blanks. Now I will just fill in the blanks by constructing a cardboard template. I've made a tooth! Oh, it looks like it has some gingivitis. Wow, considering I cut that sloppier than a last call prostitute, it fits pretty well. Speed hole.
just tack the other side into place. So close enough. And of course, the other side is exactly the same. Make a cardboard template, transfer it to the metal, and cut it out. And don't forget the speed holes. And then, obviously, just tack it into place. Probably a good idea before I spend an hour welding this on and making it permanent that I put it back onto the car and make at least one test fit. Because it would suck more than fashion advice from Lady Gaga to have to uh, spark up the grinder and cut all of this out again because I found out that the rack had moved a quarter inch during the mock-up process. Well, everything still fits, including needing to clearance the transmission a little for the fluid line. Even though this is pretty thick metal, I'm still trying to weld only about an inch or so at a time uh, and do alternating sides just to avoid warping it an extreme amount. wondering, uh, the welder is running point 035 wire, and I have the uh, wire speed set to 5, and the current setting set to D. To do these edges, I turn the wire speed and current down to 3.5 C. Done. In real time, that took just over an hour. Well, hopefully nothing moved too much while welding this. Oh, remind me to chamfer these holes a little bit. Still straight, still fits. That's a good thing. Because there's nothing worse than an ill-fitting rack. 
Well, the Miata inner tie rod shares exactly the same outer thread as the RX-7 outer tie rod end. So, it's just a matter of putting the RX-7 tie rod end on there. Uh-oh. Well, I guess I gotta say, these pretzels are making me thirsty. No. Uh, the rent is too damn high. No. Um, these tie rods are much too long. It looks like I need an inner tie rod about two inches, two and a quarter inches shorter. I bought this 30 millimeter wrench just to take off these tie rods. Freaking tight! Oh, I don't think these are greasy enough. Well, I've spent my whole life dealing with the perils of having a long rod, so I thought I had a, an easy solution. The uh, tie rods from the RX-7, which just so happened to be two inches shorter than the Miata tie rods. Unfortunately, that creates a small rod problem. Hot dog in a hallway. It turns out that the RX-7 tie rod uses M14 inner threads, and the Miata rack is M17. Seriously, Mazda? M17? Who the hell uses M17 threads. So, using my awesome CRT monitor, I once again hit the internet and started researching rod. Unfortunately, it looks like there are very few steering racks in the world that use M17 inner threads. I did find one tie rod that was about seven and a half inches long. Um, tip, don't Google image search for a seven and a half inch rod. Anyway, I found one, that would do the job, but it was not available anywhere. Thank you again, Mazda, for using M17 threads. Well, the next thought was to take an M17 bolt, chuck it in the drill press, and then drill it and tap it for M12 or M14. Problem with that was, all the M12 tie rods were way too short, and all the M14 tie rods were still too long. However, by the way, if you're looking for a tie rod to use in a custom application, the Moog Universal Tie Rod uh, webpage for both inner and outer tie rods is amazing. Just Google Moog Universal Tie Rods. It's a listing of all the tie rods they make with all the dimensions and all the tread pitches. At that point, I admitted defeat and just took my Miata tie rods to the local machine shop, had them chuck them on a lathe, and add three inches worth of threads. Now I can cut to length. Very, very quick and dirty alignment here to uh, make sure that the hub is roughly parallel to the frame rail. These are uh, RX-7 tie rod ends. They have the same M12 by 1.25 thread as the Miata tie rods. So what I've done is already measured the thread length on the inside of the rod end. And then I guess that means we'll cut right about here. Wow, surprised I cut the threads that clean. Looks good enough to me. Well, I don't see the need for this to come apart again, so I might as well button the steering rack end all up. Put some red Loctite on that since loose inner tie rods Sure would suck. Um, 
Oh, it's righty tighty lefty loosey. Generous helping of grease. And one protective joint condom. There we go. I'll probably put some proper stainless steel zip ties on it uh, on final assembly, but for right now, and the off, off, off chance that I have to deboot this thing, I'll just use some cheap plastic ties. And of course, it all leads up to this moment. Castle nut. When the car goes for a final alignment, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna thread a nut down on there and uh, tack it into place so that the uh, techs have something to uh, grab onto. Just got to clean the lube out of my hole. Now, I'm sure this will come as a shock to you, but unsurprisingly, the other side is exactly the same. Just a little bit of anti-seize. This is still mock-up. I just don't want the thing to get stuck in case some moisture gets in here. Tie rods installed. Okay, now with everything mounted up, take a look at the angle of the tie rod to the control arm. They are almost parallel. It's important that they usually be as parallel as possible to avoid bump steer. Um, what that means is that it's important to remember that the control arm travels up as the suspension moves at an arc. So the tie rod end is traveling at an arc as well. If the tie rod isn't parallel to the control arm, as they travel in that arc, they're traveling at different angles, meaning that the rod will end up changing its length at a different rate than the uh, control arm. So that's either going to push on the knuckle if it gets longer and nudge the wheel, or pull on the knuckle, again, nudging the wheel. That's bump steer. Now, because my um, struts are not mounted permanently at the top, I can't articulate the suspension and measure the deflection of this hub to check uh, to see whether I have excessive bump steer. So I'll have to wait until I figure out my strut top arrangement. Looks pretty good here. If I have a problem, then I can bring this arm perfectly parallel to the tie rod by simply spacing the tie rod down on the outer end. I gotta say thank you to whatever popular Chrysler uses the same .620 inch 36 spline uh, steering shaft as a Miata slash RX-7 slash Cosmo because it just turns out that sweet manufacturing makes a U-joint to fit that with a standard three-quarter inch shaft on the other side. A double U-joint will easily handle the rather extreme uh, angle from the column to the uh, steering rack joint. I can't take it out of the bag because I have to send it back. I uh, ordered the wrong U-joint. Sorry, Speedway Motors. But you gotta have a rag joint to make sure that every little vibration from the wheels isn't translated to the steering wheel 
and I'm going to reuse the Cosmo rag joint because uh, why not? It fits the steering column. Really? Okay, and this right here is the part I'm going to remake or modify to uh, accept a standard three-quarter inch shaft instead of a 36 spline shaft. I relocated the vise to the drill press to hold this mess in place. And what I'm doing is clamping down the existing piece so that I can use it as a drilling template. Because these holes, since the whole thing rotates, have to be pretty precise. Oh, it's the story of my life. The shaft is too big for the hole. The uh, Borgeson U-joint is a three-quarter inch bore. This is a three-quarter inch uh, shaft, but I'm sort of hitting a tolerance issue. I found a, a bolt that fits very snugly into the bore. So we'll just chuck it up in the drill press. I set the uh, spindle speed to 3,000 RPM. The sandpaper. That worked really well. Got to try to get this as center as possible. Um, yes, drilling what is essentially a precision hole with a hole saw is a kind of stupid idea, but there is a method to my madness, and uh, I don't have a three-quarter inch bit. Just clamp it to my big-ass metal plate so it doesn't warp when I weld. Okay, well now I get to spend the next half an hour carefully measuring the center of this thing between all these bolt holes and nudging it ever so slightly with a hammer into position half a millimeter by half a millimeter. Uh, there might be a tool for this, but I don't have it. I tacked uh, alternating sides to try to avoid this thing pulling because it's like within a tenth of a millimeter center.
cool. Still basically straight. I want to weld the back side, but I forgot to chamfer the edge of the tubing before I welded it in place, so. I guess I could have made it round before all the welding with the hole saw. Now I'm not going to admit how long this took to jig up. Suffice it to say that the last scene uh, was yesterday. The problem is that this U-joint pivots everywhere. I thought I could just clamp it in the vise. Not a chance. Okay, time to ruin a $240 U-joint. <laughs> bored out to five millimeters so it can be tapped for M6. So my adapter just goes on in place of the uh, original piece. I'm just snugging these down right now, not cranking them down, because there's some alignment. Anyone know what the point of this spring is? Now, of course, this is a hand-fabricated part, so there is some run out. What I can do is turn it to the point of maximum run out, center it as much as I can. I can always elongate these holes. And minimize that run out as much as I can. For now that's okay. If the steering feels lumpy, I guess what I'll have to do is have this part machined. But for now, it's fine for mock-up and we'll see what happens. All that work just to attach a U-joint. A lot cheaper and easier to mock up with wooden dowel than it is with metal steering shaft. My bandsaw doesn't have a wood setting though. Just trying to minimize the angles on all the U-joints because they're only supposed to see a maximum 30 degree angle. The beauty of the dowel is I can try this a bunch of times. Well, that's closer, it just needs to be shortened a little bit. Um, that's probably going to take a few uh, trips back and forth from the saw. Next tool I buy is going to be a lathe.
Well, the line helped me locate the hole for the uh, rack side U-joint, and I lined the hole up with the actual joint itself, and that let me put both joints in line, which apparently uh, must be done so that the uh, shaft turns smoothly. All assembled, ready to go onto the car. Okay, well everything still lines up it looks like, but one more step. Now because the top is a double joint, you try to turn the wheel and the shaft is going to flop around like an old man that's run out of Viagra. So I have to install a center support bearing. I'm sure that you've all seen steering shafts supported at the uh, car show with rod ends. The uh, problem with rod ends is that they suck. They fail almost immediately and there's no grease nipple and they're not sealed and they're awful. Uh, I'm going to use a flange mount bearing. This is just a sealed flange mount bearing from the hardware store with a grease fitting. Now this is about where it's going to sit, but first I have to make it look like it didn't come off of a tractor. Well, there was zero chance of getting the camera for a good angle of me making this template, but all I did was stick some tape on the frame and uh, then uh, trim it with a razor blade. Okay, and these tabs just bolt on, which will be used to secure the bearing to the plate that I just made. Well, there's really no easy way to jig this thing up, so I'm doing my best to try to support it with welding magnets so I can make some templates. Well, as always, a cardboard template is the place to start to figure out the shape of the uh, connecting pieces. Seems to fit. Time to make it out of the hard stuff. Same procedure as always. First trace it out, then cut. over to the bench to trim a little, add a little, and finish well. Just decided to give this a little bit of a trim and uh, add a filler panel for a little bit more support prior to welding.
Now it's just a matter of putting it all together for the final time. Notice I welded some uh, reinforcements to the side of the bearing flange. It being uh, cast, I just felt that I should give it a little bit more strength. Now, the moment of truth. First, split screen. Not quite done yet. One more thing. The uh, strut tops are still being retained by my temporary braces. Gotta fix that. Now this is the original Cosmo strut top, but it doesn't fit the RX-7 strut. Go figure. Now this is an RX-7 strut top, which obviously fits the strut and has mounting studs close enough that I could just elongate the Cosmo uh, holes. Problem is that it mounts the strut like two inches below the surface of the uh, strut tower. Now this is the strut top from a 98 Ford Escort. It not only has almost the same D hole for the shock as the RX-7 strut mount, but it has basically the same bolt pattern as the Cosmo mount, just slightly thicker studs, and it mounts the strut up level with the strut tower, moving the assembly higher, meaning the car can ride lower. Only thing is, the top of the RX-7 strut is just slightly larger than the hole on the mount. I have a lot of experience expanding holes, so it's just a simple matter of a little bit of filing. Now, I can't take credit for discovering the uh, Escort strut tops would fit. I actually stumbled across it on the RX-7 forum uh, in a thread by PJ, who used the same trick to put a uh, second gen subframe under his first gen RX-7. So, thanks PJ. Oh yeah, sweet insertion. Escort strut tops have slightly bigger studs. So much of my life is spent expanding holes. And of course, passenger side is exactly the same, so through the magic of editing, done. No, the stabilizer bar isn't too heavy for me to lift, but the bolts that hold it to the car are the same bolts that support the engine cross member. So I gotta support the whole mess with a jack, so that way I remove the bolts. 
the engine doesn't fall out. And Rock Auto actually had a stabilizer bar and links kit for a 76 Cosmo in stock. Now there were no instructions with this kit, but I gather it can probably only go together one way. Which hopefully is something like this. tighten up for now and that's it for now I'm going to call the front suspension and steering done now obviously springs are an issue but um, since I'm using air suspension that will come in a later episode when I do the air the camber of the uh, front wheels is still just a little bit positive but again until I get the uh, car at ride height there's no point playing around with that. I may just have to move the uh, top of the shock tower in a little bit. What's next? I don't know. Um, there's about to be some changes around here and in my life. Uh, positive changes, mind you. However, that may interfere with working on the car just a little bit. So I think whatever I do next is going to be a small, non-committal project. No more heavy fab and suspension uh, engineering. Something, eh, maybe reasonably simple.